your job will be so much easier if you learn how to foster those relationships, get to know people. When you're out and about and you don't have time to talk to somebody, talk to them for five minutes uh, because you never know down the line that could be a story, uh, whether that's as news or as in sports. Uh, just make sure to foster those relationships with coaches at every level, and I, it, it'll pay off. may not be now, may not be tomorrow, but it'll definitely pay off. Welcome to the Next Level Journalist, where you will hear from some of the best journalists in the business or who have been there, done that, and willing to share with you what they've learned so you can get better, faster. My guest today is the sports director at WTVQ-TV in Lexington, Kentucky, Brian Kennedy. Thank you so much for making time for this today. Happy to do it. Well, Brian, you and I obviously crossed paths a little bit when I was in Lexington. And since then, you've moved up to the sports director position, so congrats on that. Give us a bullet point version uh, of your progression, if you will, of your journey um, and um, in news and sports. Yeah, man. my uh, I took the scenic route, as I'll tell people. Uh, so I graduated from UK in 2010. Uh, I'm originally from Owensboro, Kentucky. So after I graduated, uh, I would say I had like one foot in of like being going all into journalism and another foot out. I mean, once you graduate, you hear, you hear all the things about how, you know, it's a tough job. You got to love it. No holidays. You won't see your family. You have to move in the middle of nowhere. So, I mean, I'm like 22. I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't sound fun at all. Like, I don't want to do that right now. Uh, so literally, I moved home and worked worked at Sears for about – three or four months. Uh, at the end of that three or four months, I was like, yeah, okay, well, this this has got to change. Uh, so I actually, I made my resume tape, sent it to a few stations near Owensboro. Evansville, Indiana is the is the main market there. It's where all the TV stations are. So send it to a few of those few of those stations. That Those markets are like probably low to mid 100s. They're not really, uh, you know, a, a first job. Uh, so, you know, all those news directors were very nice. I actually met with one of them. Uh, he let me come in and talk to, he's like, just let you know off top, like you're not, you're not going to get the job, but, <laughs> but, uh, I, I can give you some pointers, which was really good. You know, he, yeah. he, he destroyed my resume tape. I had, I was looking for my first job and I had anchoring clips. He's like, don't ever do that again. I was like, noted. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take those out. Uh, did that. And that solidified. I was like, yeah, I'm not ready. I don't want to do this right now. Uh, so I got a job working at U. I worked at Henry Clay High School for about a year and a half as a college counselor. Uh, that was fun. Enjoyed it. Uh, from there, that parlayed into a job as an admissions counselor with the University of Kentucky. Uh, that was really fun. I basically, I worked the South Central Kentucky area, so Bowling Green, uh, that kind of area, trying to get kids to come to Kentucky admissions-wise. I uh, did that for a while. They paid for my master's, got my master's in sports, media, and branding. Uh, as a fallback for one day when I would go into journalism, maybe if I didn't like it, not, not it was all as cracked up to be, that was a backup option. Uh, but then the fall of 2014, I got married, and then the next step was like, all right, now we're ready to move. So then uh, one of my good friends, his name's Andrew Dawson, he worked at uh, WBKO at the time. And uh, mm -hmm. like I said, I used to go to Bowling Green for work. And one time I was like, hey, man, like I just need you to shoot, go out with me for an hour few places I need to shoot a few stand-ups uh, and on top of that since you're in the business you can critique me on, on the fly like don't do this do this uh, so one day literally I, I finished all my stuff for UK and he was like hey meet me you know at uh, EA Diddle we went to EA Diddle shot one went to Western's football field shot one uh, and put together like kind of like a fake resume tape a bunch of stand-ups that were connected to no stories uh, right. and that was what I sent out and uh, you know the process, man. You're basically sending out 100 darts and hoping one hits. Uh, and and it could be months before it hits. You don't know when it's going to happen. Uh, sure enough, I didn't hear anything for probably about two or three months. And I don't know how your process went, but you get really frustrated and down. You're like, is this going to happen? Yep. What am I going to do? I knew at the time I didn't want to be in a missions council for the rest of my life. I, I knew I wanted to do journalism. I knew that's what I wanted to do. And then out of nowhere, like one week, I, I literally got like three calls from three different news directors. And that, oh, wow. I had three interviews back to back to back. So I was like, this, okay, all right. So this is probably really going to happen. Uh, the two that I that stood out the most, one was uh, in Mississippi. Another was in uh, Lake Charles, Louisiana. 
And I, I remember when the news director from uh, Gulfport, Mississippi, got off the phone with me, and he was like, you know, setting up an interview. And my wife was like, where was like, who was that news director? I was like, they were in Gulfport, Mississippi. And she was like, where's that? And I was like, I don't even, I don't even remember applying for the job. Uh, so <laughs> we're like, get it on Google Maps, like, oh, it's on the coast. That's pretty cool. It's close to New Orleans. I was like, okay, cool. And I was like, I had no recollection ever ever applying there, which is which is hilarious in hindsight. <laughs> Uh, but I sure enough, I ended up getting a job. It was as an MMJ. Uh, as you know, sports jobs are a dime a dozen. Uh, mm-hmm. Not only are they hard to find, nobody leaves them once they get them because they're so hard to get. Uh, yeah. So I ended up getting a, a job as MMJ. So, you know, your nine to five, you know, regular news reporter. That was how I was going to have to cut my teeth. Uh, did that. Didn't mind it. I did a lot of uh, sports when I, when I could. The station didn't have a sports reporter at the time, uh, WXXV in, in Goldfield, Mississippi. We didn't have a sports reporter. I mean, it was market, I think, 183, so everyone's pulling double duty from, from top to bottom uh, just to save money and just because that's what you had to do. I uh, did an MMJ. I mean, it, it's, it's a grind. Every day is something different, which is, you know, the interesting part, but every day is probably going to be something that you're not wild about doing either. Uh, everything from crime to uh, senior citizen dance down the road is <laughs> is, is, is the grand spectrum of what I, what I was covering. Uh, but fortunately, since we were in Goldport, Mississippi, uh, we were about an hour from New Orleans. So uh, at the time in New Orleans, so where I was in Goldport, an hour to the east was Moss Point, Mississippi, or and that's where Devin Booker was from. So when Devin Booker and the Suns played the Pelicans, I was actually able to cover a uh, Pelican Suns game. Got to get in the locker room, talk to Booker. That was sweet. Uh, got to cover the Sugar Bowl one year. That was uh, that was pretty cool. That was when Ole Miss was loaded. Uh, got to cover uh, an NFL preseason game. Um, Malcolm Butler was from the. Uh, he was from kind of that Mississippi area. This was a year after he made that you know game saving uh, interception. So that next year, the Patriots played the Saints. Uh, got to cover them. That was pretty cool. Like Gronk awesome. and Tom Brady were passing. I mean, I was like, yeah, this is what I this is this is what I want to do. This is like you know pretty yeah. high up there. Like I'm not gonna be doing that in my first job. I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. Uh, there was a minor league baseball team there. Got to cover them. Coincidentally, got a side job working for the minor league team. So that's life of a small market MMJ. I had a second job, uh, which is yeah. something that I had to do. Didn't mind it, but. Uh, that job wasn't a problem. It's about probably about seven months into MMJ, our station was going to start a morning show, uh, two hours in the morning. Uh, it was going to be, I think, six to eight was the original time. Uh, they wanted me to anchor it, co-anchor it with one of my, uh, uh, you know, coworkers at the time. Her name was Cat. We ended up becoming the best of friends because we sat next to each other every, every single morning. Uh, so MMJ parlayed into morning anchor. Uh, they ended up expanding that two hours to a four-hour morning show. So we were on from five to nine monday through friday so talk about a grind mm-hmm. uh, on yeah. top of being on from five to nine i still produced or went out and got a got a story every day and then they added a noon show and i come back and anchor the noon show so i was anchoring about four and a half hours worth of news every single day on top of producing and being an mmj so i say that was the at the time the peak of of the grind and i had a kid so i wasn't sleeping so yeah it was, wow. <laughs> it was yeah, yeah about a year and year and a half into that, I was like, "All right, yeah, this is done." Because, I mean, after a while, waking up at three in the morning every day, you're not unless it's what you want to do. It's it, it becomes more work than you know something you wanted to spend your life doing. So, right. Uh, when I started looking for a job, I wanted sports. At that point, I was like, "All right, I'm getting a sports job. Nothing else. I refuse to do anything else." And our company actually owned our station, but also owned TVQ in Lexington. So. They had a job open up. They're like, hey, would you be interested in this job? I was like, heck yeah. Uh, so in wow. 20, I want to say 2017, mm-hmm. 2017, I believe, I moved back to Lexington, started as a weekend sports guy. A uh, year and about a year later, Alex uh, Ryzen, the sports director, he, he left. I moved into the sports director position, and here we are. It was a yeah, long road. Cool. That is one wild story. Yeah, dude. I mean, so, when they, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, from literally selling TVs at Sears to uh, being the sports director in, at a Lexington station. It's, it's been a wild ride, but I'm, I'm happy. I love it, and it's, it's enjoyable for sure. 
Well, you certainly, uh, certainly share tons of value just in your story. If people are picking up on just how you were making sacrifices, how you were, you know, you mentioned cutting your teeth, you know, doing anything you could to get in and then see what that turned into. Obviously, the stars aligned a little bit with the fact that you got to go home, basically, yeah. and cover sports and what you're doing. But, I mean, if you don't pay your dues and, you know, you know, humble yourself a little bit by just doing anything to get in, oh, yeah. that opportunity never happened. So I love, I love that story, Brian. Um, how do you think, I mean, I, I got an idea, but how do you think you did break through and finally get that opportunity? You said you got three calls in a week after not hearing months. What do you think it was that helped you break through for that first opportunity? Yeah, I think it was just persistence, man. And knowing that, you know, this is what I wanted to do. And whether it took, you know, whether I got a call in a week or three to four months, like this was, this is what I wanted to do. And I wasn't going to stop. Uh, I mm -hmm. remember those people that emailed me that finally called me back, you know, you send your, your, your resume and your, and your resume tape. And then I follow back up and then I follow back up again. So persistence definitely was the key. Uh, I don't know if they just finally called me cause I got on their nerves or what, but I was like, somebody's going to call me back. One of you all are going to call me back. Uh, whether I, <laughs> it's to tell me to stop calling and emailing you or for a, for a job, somebody's going to get back with me and, uh, I eventually broke through, you know, I always say your first job is someone taking a chance on you uh, because it's really not up to you at all. It's it's up to you and to the point that you have to do the work, you know, be persistent. But at the end of the day, like your first job, a station, you know, every station sees your resume tape so differently. One could be like, I want that guy. Another could be like, I don't want to be anywhere near that guy. So it's, it's, it's crazy. You know, and you know, the station in Mississippi, my news director saw something he liked and took a chance and you know, the powers that be parlayed into where I am now. That's awesome. How about maybe some advice that you'd give to someone who's trying to break through, obviously be persistent and, and go after it, but any other advice that come to mind saying, you know what, I wish I would have done this in my link or if I would in my tape, uh, you know, or, you know, something that they could be aware of to, to try to help set themselves apart from, you know, the hundreds of other people trying to get that first job. Yeah, I would like reach out to people like me or people that are in the business that know what it takes to get in. I know I did it a little bit, but even then I was like, oh, that sounds ridiculous. That can't be true. Like, I don't, why would I, why would I do that? And then in hindsight, being in their position now, this many, this many years later, I'm like, if I had listened to them, Maybe I would have gotten a job quicker. Uh, maybe I would have been able to make those sacrifices early on and gotten a job. I feel like everything worked out to how it was going to work out for sure. But I think if I had been more, I guess, open to the advice I was getting, I maybe would have sure. gotten to this road a little bit quicker. I think especially when you when you graduate, you think you know what it takes. But in, in essence, you really have no idea what it, <laughs> what it takes. Uh, so yeah. I would say I, w I wish I'd reached out to more people, not only in the positions I wanted it to be, but people that were, you know, doing the hirings of people in my position, maybe like, hey, what, what, what do I need to do? What do I need to do better? And that's part of why I want to have you on here, because people like you, you just said for yourself, reach out to me. Right. I mean, not everybody says reach out to me in this business. It's a, you know, looking after a number one mindset, unfortunately, mm -hmm. for a lot of people. So. Yeah. Um, you know, having an open mind and, and connecting with someone like yourself, that's, that's great. And that's part of the reason I wanted to have you on here. So, um, that's great stuff, Brian. How about from a skill set? Um, you know, what is it that you have done to develop your skill set and what you can suggest aspiring journalists to do? Say, Hey, work on these things because this is how I've done it. And it's helped me. I remember my journalism teacher in school told us to watch the news. Uh, it's so simple. Uh, but it's it can it can do wonders uh, to watch if you watch the news, especially in a market like Lexington or really anywhere and just see what people are doing, how they carry themselves. I remember when I first started anchoring, man, I, I watched I must have watched newscasts from all over the country just to try to figure out what I wanted to come off across on TV. And but also I think the, the one of the hardest things I think with with journalism and being on TV is trying to come across a genuine as yourself. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember one of the greatest compliments I got after I've been anchoring for a while is I met somebody, you know, out and about and they were like, man, you're, you're just like you are on TV. And I was like, that is the great. greatest compliment you can get, which I'm sure, you know, like that was, that was like music to my ears. That made me feel like, all right, 
I'm finally getting the hang of this, but that came from watching people who were on TV be themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. There's there's that, that you know, that kind of leeway where you kind of got to figure it out, figure out who I am, how do I want to come across, and get comfortable on TV. I always tell people, yeah, at first you're going to be nervous just because you're on TV. I mean, you're, mm -hmm. you, you've never been on TV, so you're going to be nervous, and you're not going to be yourself. But after a while, you'll get more and more comfortable, comfortable, comfortable to wear – you're on TV and, and acting yourself and whether that's cracking jokes like I do or being super sarcastic like I am as well. I mean, that that's when you know you, you really you break through. So the biggest advice is watch the news. Uh, why, and, and when I wanted to do sports, uh, I watched a lot of sports center or whatever, but then I started watching the, the sports people on local news. Coincidentally, you were one of the ones. I remember I watched – one of your morning newscasts before I went to went to work on uh, at, at UK and I was saw you I saw Keith I saw Milam those guys were doing what I wanted to do in Lexington so I'm like taking notes seeing where they are and now I'm doing the same thing they are which is which is wild to, to even think about that's cool man that is so cool how about um, and you've already kind of hinted around about some challenges you've already talked about some challenges that you face clearly you face a lot of challenges but Anything from a TV news or TV sports side of things, challenges that you face in your in your daily or in your career that, that you've experienced, that you've learned from, and that you can share, and, and hopefully somebody picks up on and they can avoid, or anything that stands out to you as far as a challenge? The biggest challenge was just dealing with the grind. I mean, mm -hmm. even being an MMJ, I mean, every day you have to come in with stories you know then you get all those stories shot down and you're told to go find something else you're like well you just shot down all my ideas what else am i going to do uh that that part of the grind and then it's you know make making sure that you know how to talk to people uh journalism journalism is as much talking on tv as it is talking to other people uh you those relationships that you make in the community uh, help your job so much better. After I figured that out, getting stories was so easy. I had people texting me every day stories. Like, I was like, man, where was this three months ago? And I'm, you know, walking in with a sheet of paper getting shot down. And then, you know, four months later, I'm coming in with a list of stories like, well, this person texts me this, this city councilman texts me this, you know, this, you know, alderman texts me this. And it, it made a huge difference. Uh, sports is a whole different monster. Uh, as you know very well, I mean, from basically mid-July to when UK loses in the NCAA tournament, uh, it's it's a grind. Once again, it's that grind again. It's, you know, during the summer, we're doing football previews. We do something called 36 Blitz. We're going out to 30-plus football team for practice, whether that's at 6 a.m. or 7 p.m. You know, I'm going to football practices. That's a grind. I have kids, so I, you know, you have you add on that whole part, but you know that's tough. So not only am I going to a practice at 6 a.m., I'm anchoring that night newscast at you know five, six, and eleven. That's tough. That's that's some long mm -hmm. days. And then you know football season kicks off. You're working six, seven day weeks. You know UK plays on Saturday. Well, then UK basketball wants to start playing on Sunday. So now I'm working Monday <laughs> through Sunday. And, you know, I get a Monday, Tuesday off, and then the grind starts again. High school basketball is a grind. You know, they everyone plays Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday night, Friday night. So you're going to get in those games. And I love high school sports, so I'm saying if I can make it to a game, I'm going. So if I'm getting three or four games and I can pull it off by, by some miracle, <laughs> then I'm going to do it. So I think <laughs> the, the biggest challenge is learning how to deal with the grind, uh, but also know when to kind of scale back when you're thinking, man, all right, I'm getting burnt out. And, and you know, thinking, I got to take a break. I got to take a day off, which is hard in the sports world because you take a Tuesday off and you're going to miss Coach Soup's talking, uh, EKU's football coach talking. You're, you're going to miss some stuff, but kind of learning how to figure out a way to get some rest, get some leeway, but also deal with that grind. Brian, you shared everything from value to creativity to flexibility to the grind part of it. So much just in that past response. So hopefully people are paying attention to all the stuff that you're sharing in between, you know, that answer. So I want to respect your time um, because I know you're, you're hopping on here before, before your day starts. But I want to ask that what I used to always ask people, you know, anything you, that you want to end this with, anything that you want to share uh, that maybe we didn't touch on because the reality is we could go down so many different rabbit holes from storytelling to anchoring to reporting to shooting 
But I want to leave this last one with you. Anything that you want to share with whoever sees this um, that you think they should know? Yeah, once you get a job, I mentioned earlier, but I can't hammer enough, foster relationships. Uh, that, that's great. That, yeah. I mean, that's, that's going to be your biggest ticket to doing a better job uh, and doing your job to the best of your ability. I mean, when the pandemic hit, I mean, if you can see behind me, this was my TV set. I literally had a mm -hmm. camera set up, a light, and a TV with, uh, with our sports logo on it. And that was that was where I grinded for six months while there while there I mean for six months there were no sports but I'm a sports director so uh, but because of the re relationships I fostered basically every day I did a feature on a high school player and I loved wow. it it was in you know some days I may you know pivot off and do something on you know the Derby or something on UK football but I was doing profiles on high school players. And that was from relationships that I fostered. I knew these. I knew these players. Uh, I knew a lot about them. I knew their coaches. And that basically, there were no sports going on. But I was able to keep our sports segment going until sports started again because of these relationships that I fostered. So, you know, the pandemic is such a, a, a something we may never see again. I hope. Uh, but right. in your job, I'm, I can't stress your job will be so much easier if you learn how to foster those relationships. Get to know people when you're out and about and you don't have time to talk to somebody. Talk to them for five minutes uh, because you never know down the line that could be a story, uh, whether that's as news or as in sports. Uh, just make sure to foster those relationships with coaches at every level, and I, it, it'll pay off. may not be now, may not be tomorrow, but it'll definitely pay off. Man, I love that you shared that relationship element. and You touched on it throughout this, but that is so important. Like I said, Brian, thank you so much for – making time for this before you go in the work and all the value that you shared with us today. Heck yeah, man. I, like I said, I wish somebody would have talked to me more when I was looking for a job. So if I can help anybody else and not make the mistakes I made, then I'm all, I'm all about doing it. And thank you for checking out this channel. If you found this content beneficial, I'd appreciate it. If you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button and share it with someone you think might find it beneficial as well because this channel was simply started and created to serve you, to help others grow, to learn how other successful TV journalists do or did it. So take what serves you so you can get better faster and reach your next level.